Howdy gamer, let's talk about the runes for Tarek's support. Coming into season 10, Tarek's in a better spot than he's ever been. Um, he's kind of sleeper as everyone's forgot that he's in the game, but he's actually pretty strong as supports are weaker early, so he's able to survive the laning phase. And then come mid game, um, with the addition to Shirelia's, his build pass never been better. Um, and where you're going to be playing against a lot stronger solo lanes, having an ult that can make your entire team just ignore all damage is pretty sick. So he can have defensive and offensive utility in in all of his kits. So starting off with the keystone, it's going to be Guardian. Guardian gives you and your ally a shield whenever you're close to them and they take damage, or if you use your W um, whenever they take damage, or if you use your Q on them, most likely your W. So... The cooldown on Guardian is pretty significant as it's a, it's around a minute for most of the game. And then once it's down in the laning phase, you're kind of out of defensive tools. So you have to pick and choose like when you actually want to proc it. If you're using it like in concert with your W to block damage, but then like you're over blocking damage, then it's also to a detriment. So like let's say levels one to two, you're usually using Guardian to block like one poke ability from the enemy. And then... If you hit level 2, you can use the W to block it again. Basic example like that. Uh, with Guardian, you and your ally also gain movement speed whenever it's proc'd. So if you're using it offensively, um, let's say you're trying to land an E on the enemy, then it helps you get in position if they turn for damage. And then if you're using it defensively, it has pretty good synergy as, let's say you're trying to appeal for your ally, you use your W on them, and then they get the Guardian Shield, and then you use your E, and then it stuns the target that is trying to dive them, and then they also, your allies also gonna have the movement speed to get away. So has a the peel the peel utility from it is so so strong, so long that it's not wasted. If the Guardian proc is wasted, the cooldown is so significant. So you're dealing with like a double-edged sword there. When it's on, it's so strong. When it's off, like when it's off, you're just not getting it back up for a pretty meaningful amount of time. The Guardian Shield scales with your percentage bonus AP and then percentage bonus health. Um, kind of helps uh, with the AP as you might get a little bit of AP if you build the Thines, but you're mostly going to get it from the percentage bonus health from a lot of sources: your items, um, your runes, etc., your levels. With the secondary runes, it's kind of tempting to go Font of Life, but it's, uh, all of the second, all of these runes kind of suck for Tarek, but Shield Bash is kind of the best because it's so easy for Tarek to proc. Um, whenever you're on top of someone, you're going to be dealing more damage. The extra stats that are offered aren't that great, but it just gives you a little bit more damage for whenever you're on top of someone. It would be nice if Tarek had a slow or something for Font of Life, but it really doesn't add up. The third room choice, all of them are pretty good. Um, with conditioning, after 10 minutes you gain 9 armor and 9 magic resist, and then you have increased armor and magic resist by 5%. So if you can get away with conditioning with, let's say, a lane like Morgana, right? Morgana just negates anything Tarek would want to do offensively anyways. But she doesn't bully Tarek that hard unless Tarek just simply walks into her. So in a lane like that, you could run something, you could run conditioning and then kind of just say here's the laning phase we're both going to farm it out i'll meet you mid game and then just have more stats because of it but if you're playing into a lane where the poke is unavoidable something like zarath zyra uh syndra ad caitlin things like that second wind gives you a ton of value as it gives you more effective health and if you're eating the damage then your carry isn't and then if you're at a healthier amount of health then it makes it so that if you're going to go for an all-in, then it's way more likely. Um, bone plating has its utility in negating all-ins. Lanes like Leon and Nautilus, where it's up to you to eat their abilities, but if you do so, you can die because those champions have a lot of burst, and then they also set up their allies to deal a lot more damage too. So with bone plating, it allows you to eat CC abilities and then have a way more likely hood to survive especially in the laning phase so minutes like 1 to 14 so depending on the lane um you should be thinking about those things of like which one of these to run uh defaultly just go with second win if you if you can't do the thinking for yourself just go with second win it's going to give you a lot of hp and then for the fourth rune 
Overgrowth is really tempting. Really tempting as it gives you a lot of HP. But gotta go with Revitalize. Taric is like one of the best champions in the game at using Revitalize. And Forbidden Idol items. Because he has a heal and a shield. And with Revitalize, your heals and shields... You cast or receive or 5% stronger and increase by an additional 10% on targets below 40% health. The thing is with Tarek's heals and shields too, you can get his heal off like four times in a team fight and you can get his shield off like twice. It's so, so crazy. Put this on top of um, Redemption Locket. Going to be getting a ton of value. Secondary runes. Um, the secondary runes vary depending on matchups. Defaultly though, Presence of Mind and Legend Tenacity is really, really strong. You want to be picking Taric into melee matchups anyways. If you're picking him into like Enchanter supports or Mage supports, you're just picking into losing matchups and you should expect to lose. So Taric does best when he's against melees because he basically gets a free lane and he can also win a lot of those lanes too. And if you have a free lane with Taric and you come into the mid game level 11 and you have, you have just tons of Tons of healing and shielding power and peel ability and that ult, dude. He, literally one of, the, one of the most broken ults in the game. Anyways, presence of mind. On takedowns, you restore 20% of your mana, and then you increase your maximum mana. So anytime you get a kill or assist, it's going to give you a bit of mana back, which Terra can actually use, because Terra can actually run out of mana, because you spam his abilities so much. And then having the, the maximum mana increased also helps a ton, as the later and the later the game goes, just the more... Mana you have to play with in a team fight, aka the more heals and shields you can actually get off. And then with Legend Tenacity, um, you gain 5% 5 5 tenacity plus a bit more that you have to stack up through either getting CS or assist. So about mid game, this will be stacked up, and then you just have a bit more tenacity. If you use this with Merc Treads, like CC abilities just stop affecting you. So you really, really start countering champions like Leon and Nautilus. Or Thresh or any other melee champion basically. So if you can, if you can run this page, you should. And it's basically just pick, run this page into any melee. If you're playing into ch enchanters or mage champions for some god awful reason, like you're better off going with inspiration second and then running either perfect timing, um, perfect timing biscuit delivery or cosmic insight biscuit delivery. Uh, because with biscuit delivery, whenever you're or every two minutes you get a biscuit and then up until six minutes and then the biscuits restore 10% of your missing health and mana and then increase your maximum mana by 50. So it still gives you the mana increase that you're looking for with Tarek. And then it also gives you like a laning tool where it's going to restore your missing health if you need it. And then it can also restore your missing mana because even if you all in an enchanter or mage support with like, let's say a flash E, they can still flash away and then turn on you. So you're gonna you're gonna need like extra health or mana at some point in the lane. So yeah, and then with cosmic insight, just having your flash and uh, just yeah, just having your flash and then a little bit of CDR helps a bit. Back to the back to this page. Um, if you're running this, your the adaptive runes that you want to run is uh, it can either be attack speed or CDR. I think attack speed's generally generally more useful as it helps you kill kill wards. And then also once you're on top of someone, just having more attack speed helps you just deal more damage. The CDR is good though. Uh, the only thing with the CDR is that it has to scale, so you're better off with going with something that helps you early game. And then with Taric, going double armor is pretty good. Uh, the only thing about it is that in most lanes, you're going to want to go armor and magic resist anyways, as in the bot lane, even though you're against an AD carry, you're still against their support, and basically every support in the game deals magic damage in some form. Melee supports deal magic damage, mage supports obviously deal magic damage, and then enchanter supports deal magic damage. And then you're primarily going to want to be picking Taric into melee supports. If you're picking Taric into weaker lanes, such as like... Thresh, Braum, the where the support isn't dealing a high amount of magic damage and you can get away with it, run double armor. Because if you have double armor, even if the enemy support like hits you a bit, the enemy AD, any damage they follow up with, isn't going to be as good. And then whenever you have more armor on Taric, your, your carries are going to be benefiting from the extra armor as well because you share the armor that you have. And then come mid-game, 
if you have just like Knight's Vow or something, then you're basically invincible to an AD carry. So that's the runes for Taric. Um, the only variation being inspiration if you're for some reason against major enchanter supports. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I answer literally all of them. And if this video helped you, leaving a like helps me. And if you're interested in support gameplay, twitch.tv slash sorry Nelson. I'm not playing Tarek, dude. <laughs> maybe, maybe one game a season I'll play Tarek. I'm playing Senna, dude. I'm shooting.